Hi, my name is Danny Bellemeyer and I work at the UMKC Libraries. I'm our head of outreach and engagement and so I do a lot of student engagement projects and work with our external communication and I also um, found myself on our signage team. Um, we did a big signage revamp project a few years ago and then decided going forward that we would um, do a team-based approach to keeping the signage up to date in our building. UMKC Libraries um, has uh, two separate buildings, our Health Sciences Library and our main library, Miller Nichols Library. Miller, Miller Nichols is a five-story building with a ton of destinations in it. Um, we have a lot of students come through the building every day who are looking for classrooms and study spaces, our special collections and archives, and then we also host events where people are trying to find um, our conference rooms or different event locations. So we have tons of signage, and as we did our big signage revamp project, we came up with some principles of design. Um, we read a lot about this. We relied on research in user experience, um, which is a big part of librarianship, um, and then also read some things about wayfinding signage and signage system design, um, and then came up with something that would work for us in our particular library situation. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our types of signage. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the system we have in our building, and then I'm also going to talk about some principles of signage design and also placement and design. So we have um, a few categories of signage in our building. Um, these may make sense for the kind of libraries that you work in as well. So we have regulatory signage, which is like required by code and by law. So um, every room in a building has to have a uh, sign next to the door within a certain height that labels the room and has braille on it. We have emergency exits, we have room capacity, stairwells, all of those kinds of things. Um, and so we have a person who's in charge of working with the facilities people to order those, but we don't like decide what goes on them. Our big system is our directional signage, which consists of directories. Um, like when you go to a doctor's office and you see all of the things that are in a building and you figure out what floor your doctor is on, um, floor plans, which are maps, wayfinders, which are the things that you follow along the way to find your destination, and then destination signs, which mark the destination when you arrive at it. And then we also have informational signs. Um, and these are the ones that provide instructions to our users. So these are the ones like, uh, this is a laptop station, so plug your laptop in here, or reserve this study room by click by uh, snapping this QR code, um, or use this printer by swiping your ID card. Um, and so while I am gonna talk to you about our directional signage system, because it's pretty interesting and I think there's a lot to be learned from the way we designed it, I'm also going to give some principles of design for informational signage because I think this is um, a lot more where you as a future library worker or current library worker may find yourself needing to make some decisions. So some of our um, principles of design are that less is more. So we know that signs can't and shouldn't replace library workers. We really do want our users to come up to our service desk and ask us for help or ask us for directions. Um, but we also want users to be able to feel empowered to navigate our building and our services on their own when they want to do that. So that's when we place signage um, to help people identify what something is or how to use it um, or how to get where they're going or um, you've reached a point in your task where you do need to come to a service desk and ask us for help. Um, another uh, principle is that we um, use our signage really sparingly. We know that it won't solve most perceived problems um, and more signs contribute to signage noise so people won't read any of them. Um, you may have experienced going somewhere and you walk up to a service desk and there have been signs taped all over the front of the desk or the partition and you have no idea where to look and so you don't read any of them, you just ask the worker your question. And again, we do want people to ask us questions. We work in a library. That's why we have workers at all of our service desks. Um, but we know that throughout their entire experience in our library, if everything's just covered in signs, they won't read them. Um, and so when somebody says like, hey, should we have a sign here um, to help fix this problem that we perceive we're having? We stop and think, will a sign really fix that problem? Um, will users read it? Um, and can they get the information they need to do that task from a sign here in this location? Sometimes they can. So what we do is we try to make sure that we always place our signs at the point of need um, or at the point of decision making. So this is really applicable in our wayfinding signage that I'm gonna show you. Um, but like at the printer, users have two key tasks. One, they need to either send their print job there or two, they need to pick up their print job. Um, and so we only give them the information they need to do those two things. Um, most of our printers are within sight of a computer lab person or a service desk. And so we know that if they need more than that, they'll ask for it. 
Um, and then we also place them at points when they need to make decisions. Um, and so again, that's a lot to do with how to find things. Um, we also need to make sure that the signage content matches the format and the location, and this is what we call dwell time. So if somebody is walking past something in a hallway, they're not going to stop and read it. So this uh, actually pertains a lot to promotional signage or the kinds of things you might put on put on a digital screen. Um, but if you have some, if you have content content on a sign that requires people to stop and read it for a certain period of time, um, you can pretty much guarantee that they're not going to get beyond the very first part of whatever you put there. So text has to be really limited and focus on the key tasks. Research shows that readers only read like three to five words on a sign and that they read in an F pattern on a screen, like um, across the top and then down the side um, when they're skimming. And so we know this from um, eye tracking on websites and web pages. Um, and so we try to focus our sign design around that. We have really big headlines, reserve this study room, laptop station, black and white printer. Um, and then we give um, the information that helps the user accomplish a task, snap the QR code, um, and then maybe something else um, if it's really necessary. And then we also have a lot of physical signage that pertains to an online task. And so in those cases, um, the QR code is back, baby, right? Uh, we thought it was never gonna work out. Um, and uh, then um, the COVID pandemic um, repopularized the QR code because we didn't want to touch things. Uh, so we make heavy use of QR codes um, for things like reserving study rooms, releasing print jobs from a printer um, and other things like that. Um, so we match a QR code with a short friendly URL for someone who can't or doesn't want to use the QR code um, so that people can actually accomplish the task online from that um, physical location. So finally, I wanted to talk to you placement. Um, so visibility, contrast, and then sign and text size. So think about how far and how close users will be standing or um, positioned when they're viewing your sign. Um, so if a person is of um, average height or if they're seated in a wheelchair, how far or how close can they be to the sign and still be able to read it? Um, and if it's something they need to see from an entrance, uh, how far away is it readable or visible? Um, or how, is it going to draw them to, um, to move closer to read it? Uh, we also make a big deal about contrast to make sure that our signs are super readable. We use a contract, contrast checker. You might be familiar with this from web design. Um, black and white are the highest contrast. Um, and then um, co uh, complementary colors. Uh, but making sure it's readable and there are contrast checkers designed for print instead of digital uh, formats. Um, and then our text size, we try to make it as loosely, um, same thing with signage, um, the physical signage itself, we try to make it as large as as reasonably possible. So um, I'm going to talk to you about our directional signage. Um, and so um, I took a bunch of videos um, going around a library and looking at our wayfinding system um, and the different parts of it. Um, yeah, that kind of contribute to finding your way around our big, rather complicated building. The first part of this is our directories. This is the directory, which is one of the access uh, points to the wayfinding system. system. Um, it contains everything, everything um, all, all destinations, destinations inside, inside this building. building. They're, They're arranged, arranged alphabetically, alphabetically and then uh, have color-coded color -coded floor indicators to tell you if they're on the ground, first, second, third, or fourth floors. Um, and things that repeat have icons. So for example, printers and scanners have a recognizable icon. Service desks have a recognizable icon, and these match up with the map-based floor plans as well. Um, this is one of th those things that's really important to have, but also takes a lot of upkeep because every time anything changes in the building, um, these require an update as well. You can also see the volume levels by floor. And like the rest, like of, our the rest of our signage system, system these are giant, giant vinyl stickers, stickers. So, so we can actually, actually peel them off, them have a new have one printed, printed and, and stick a new one, one on to the sign holder. holder. 
Giant vinyl stickers are actually a really important part of this. We had an old wayfinding system and we repurposed part of it, which was part of the inspiration for having these vinyl decals that get reapplied to um, permanently installed sign holders. Um, but also we're a five story building and we have a lot of campus partners um, that are also with us in our building. Things change names over time. Um, and so we've already done multiple updates in the last couple of years to our wayfinders um, and our sign company. Um, we send them a design for basically a giant decal sticker and then they peel off the old one and stick the new one on. Every at every stairwell, stairwell and every, and every elevator, elevator, elevator exit, there's, exit, there's, there's a floor, floor plan for the floor, floor that you've that arrived at. at. The first, the first floor, floor is color coded red. red. So this is a so reminder, is a reminder of, where of where you are. Building Our building has five stories and, and the, ground the ground floor and the first and the floor have walkout walk levels, kind of like, levels, a, kind of like a walkout basement, basement in a house. And, and so, this so this reminds you what floor you're on and then it calls out some major destinations on this floor and the first direction you would need to turn to look for that destination on the floor. So the floor plans are also um, part of, the, of what's required. Um, and so instead of having the teeny tiny little floor plans um, that are required by code, we decided to make them a big feature to help people find their way around. And then the wayfinders are what we refer to as those um, horizontal bands um, that have one destination and an arrow, a directional arrow on them. The when I arrive floor, on the second from floor this from elevator this or elevator stairs, or stairs I have access, I have to, access to a floor right plan right away, and if I'm looking for the Emeritus College, the, college, the, arrow, tells the arrow tells me to continue this direction. And then, and by, then the by the time I reach a corner, corner where I need to decide if I'm going to turn left or right, there's another wayfinder that tells me to go right for the Emeritus College. And if I keep and walking, I, keep walking I reach another third, third decision point, point, and this again and tells me to go right for the Emeritus College. The wayfinder. There's another wayfinder with the Emeritus College, the Emeritus College on it. Um, if I went straight, um, if I, I went straight, I would run out of places to go. Places if, to go. if I turn I left, have of options, I have a couple of options, and I can see the door of the Emeritus College from over here. And then we make sure that we have a very clearly marked destination for everything in the entire building. So classrooms, um, vending machines, printers, um, and every single thing that's in those directories and on the wayfinders. Every destination, Every destination that's included, that's included, in, the included in the wayfinding system, either on the directories, on the directories or in these wayfinders, wayfinders that are throughout, that the, building, throughout the building, is labeled, is labeled with a destination, with destination sign. sign. So the Little Buddy, so special, the little buddy special Collections looks like this. Looks like this. Destination, destination signs, signs can also, can also look, like this. look like this. This is, this is the Special Collections, collections Gallery, so you know, so you know we've arrived. So our, we have four galleries in the building, um, and when you get to a gallery, you need to know which one you are at if you're looking for an exhibit that we've been advertising. Destination signs can, signs also, can also this like this when we have, when a, we long have a long sight line, sight line for a space where we hold, where we a, lot hold a lot of events. That giant that 325, 325 gets to our conference room 325, 325 from five far away. away. Wayfinding, wayfinding signage, signage also, also matches, matches the destination, the destination name, name and, and or the way, or the way users, users encounter, encounter the, name. the name. So, so the Miller Nichols Learning Center, Learning Center is, is connected, connected to the main, to the main library, library building, building. So the MNLC, so MNLC sign, sign points, points to the left. To the left. It has, it has MNLC, MNLC in large letters, in large letters because, because we know that when students see MNLC, MNLC 151 on their class schedule, schedule they're, they're looking for a looking classroom, for classroom number, number. Um, but um, we also talk about the Learning Center, so it's in smaller text below. Here is a positively enormous destination sign for the most asked for item on the first floor of the library, scanners and, scanners and printers, and you can see this from about a million feet away. And then finally, um, we also use some landmarks. We primarily use these for giving verbal instructions, um, but we do think of these as part of our signage system. Our classroom library classroom is not visible, is not from, visible the from the service desk, desk so, so we use landmarks, landmarks to give instructions, instructions to how to get there. To get there. Down, at the, Down at the end of this, of this uh, corridor, you can, corridor, you can see a wall with really, with large, really large photos, photos on it, so we tell people to go to the photo wall, and then, and then we, we installed a second landmark to help find the classroom. So if you walk to the photo wall and then look to the left, you will see, we'll see the fake book cases. cases. So this is so where this our is library where our classroom, classroom MNL, MNL 121, 121 is located, is located. And, it is and it is behind the fake, the book, fake case book case 
through this door. This door. So now so all the way from our service, from our service desk, desk, which you cannot see from here, see from here, we can give, we can um, give um, using these two these landmarks, two landmarks uh, much, better much better directions, directions to this classroom. To this classroom. So um, I know we spent a long time talking about the wayfinding system that's really specific to our building, um, but we spent a long time on that project um, and we had hundreds of destinations to kind of figure out how to help people get to them. Um, and then as we worked through the process, we sort of distilled our design principles um, and now we use them um, a lot more frequently for kind of those like one off signs that we need to make. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, either for like something temporary that's going on or um, for uh, needs that arise um, as, um, as things change in our building and as the needs of our student users uh, change as well. Mm -hmm. We have a big renovation coming up on the fourth floor of the library that's gonna bring in a bunch of new campus partners. Um, and so we will be reevaluating our signs again um, to incorporate all of their destinations um, and to make sure we're all like working together to make sure students are not having frustrating experiences trying to get where they're going um, and trying to use the different resources and services in our library. Um, again, I'm Danny. My last name is Wellemeyer, wellemeyerdm at umkc.edu. If you have questions for me, um, or just holler at Jace um, and he'll get you in touch with me as well. So I hope you found something interesting here. Um, you may or may not ever have to do any signage design um, going forward, um, but I find principles of user design really interesting for librarianship, both in a web and a physical um, uh, setting. Um, and so I hope you found a few takeaways there. Have a great day.